Hi, I'm Sandy Miller, and I'll be your host for the hottest tips on boating you'll find anywhere. On each topic, we hope to give you enough information to keep you interested, but not so much as to get you into trouble, or worse, turn you off with stuff you don't even want to know. If you want to go on a week's cruise, you don't have to own a sailboat or a mega yacht. You can charter one. Many people who don't like the bother of boat maintenance can charter a 45-foot sailboat for two weeks for about the price of yearly maintenance on this size vessel. We won't cover the international rules because almost all recreational boaters operate under the inland rules. These apply to lakes, rivers, and near coastal waters. The most important rule of all is avoid hitting anything. When in doubt, slow down or stop until the situation is clarified. Anytime you meet another vessel on the water, it's like approaching an unmarked intersection in your car. The good news is that rules do exist to cover the actions of each vessel. The bad news is that most vessel operators don't know these rules exist. The crossing rule. Inland rules state that when two power-driven vessels are crossing, to avoid risk of collision, the vessel which has the other on her starboard side, the giveaway vessel, must keep out of the way and if circumstances permit, cross behind the other vessel, the stand-on vessel. GPS, or the Global Positioning System, consists of 24 orbiting satellites situated 11,000 miles in space and in six different orbital paths. The most important feature of a GPS is that it gives a boater his exact position. GPS units are cheap and come in a variety of models that suit lake users or world cruisers. Some models have so many features that you can easily spend half a day just reading the manual. Stop the vessel by shifting into reverse while putting the helm over to port to begin the turn. As you enter, shift into forward while putting the helm over to starboard. A short power berth. One of the areas I specialize in is what's referred to as galvanic corrosion of underwater metals on boats. It's important to remember that galvanic corrosion is a natural occurrence, physical uh, phenomenon, when you connect uh, a, a bronze prop, a stainless steel shaft, and a sacrificial zinc all together and put them in an electrolyte. Okay, we're going to get ready to tack, ready about. Hardily, hardily. We're going to have to do this very controlled because the wind is blowing very hard. Nicely done. Considering the big expense you have just made in purchasing your vessel, it really makes no sense to then dash out and anchor with inferior rope. Why trust your entire investment to a poor quality product when the best ones only cost a few bucks more? Over the years, literally thousands of knots have been invented, but these eight should be sufficient for most boating needs. Figure eight knots are put in the ends of lines to stop them from running out through blocks. Generally, they're used where frequent re-rigging is required, such as on jib sheets. Do not use these knots on spinnaker sheets, as you may want to let the sheets run if you lose control of the spinnaker. Every boat with an engine must have an approved marine-grade fire extinguisher on board. Keep cabin extinguishers where they can be easily seen and not hidden away in a locker. In an emergency, no one will know where to find them. Be sure everyone aboard knows how to use an extinguisher. Engine rooms should have an automatic fire extinguisher with an alarm. 